Hello. So back in my cell, I thought we should provide a little um, review of inverses and then talk about inverses as they relate to trig functions before we dive into the material of this textbook section. So with that as our goal, we'll state the definition of an inverse. Two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses if their compositions are x. That is, when you compose the two functions, the functions both go away. They mutually annihilate and leave you with just the variable. And as a classic example of inverses, we can look at f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals the cubed root of x. If we compose these functions, f of g of x is the cubed root cubed and the cubed root and the cube cancel, and you are just left with x. And g of f of x is the cubed root of x cubed. And again, the cubed root and the cube cancel and leave you with x. Now, here's a question that I don't think, you know, college algebra textbooks, for example, always do the best job of answering. What are inverses for? That's kind of a broad question with a few different answers, but the answer that we care about at the moment is that inverses allow us to solve equations. To see that, let's use this example, and let's write down an equation. x cubed equals 7. And suppose you want to solve this. You want to know what x is. Well, you can take the cubed root. of both sides. On the left, because the cubed root and the cube are inverses, they cancel, and you get that x is the cubed root of 7. And then you go to your calculator or computer algebra system or whatever it is you're using and you ask it, what's the cubed root of seven? And it tells you, and you have solved the problem. X cubed equals seven has as its solution, 
So what's this have to do with trigonometry? Well, suppose we have an equation, the sine of x equals 0 0.7, for example. Just like Just like in the previous example, we solved this using an inverse. We'd like to be able to solve this using an inverse. We'd like to define some kind of inverse sine function. And then when we were faced with an equation like this, let me see if I can make this focus a little clearer. Then to solve it, we could take the inverse sine function and apply it to both sides of the equality. On the left, the function and the inverse would cancel out and leave you with x. And then just like we went to our calculator to find the cubed root of seven, we'd go to our calculator to find the inverse sine of 0 0.7. That's what we'd like to do. But there's an obstacle in our way. And that obstacle is that the sign does not have an inverse. To see that, you need to remember some college algebra. Two functions are called one to one if f of a equaling f of b means that a equals b. And the sign isn't. And I'm using the sign as like our introductory example, but none of the trig functions are one to one. The sign of zero is equal to the sign of two pi, but zero does not equal two pi. And then, again, from algebra, we have a result only one to one functions have inverses. Hence my statement that the sign doesn't. And in fact, none, none of the trig functions have inverses because none of the trig functions are one-to-one. -one. 
So where does that leave us? Does it mean that we just have to just give up and not solve equations like this? That would be in a pretty sad situation to be in. And fortunately, the answer is no. We're going to um we're going to present a trick a way of using inverses to solve equations like this, even though the sign doesn't have an inverse. But as this video is already running on a bit, I will end it here and we'll talk about our trick in the next video.